Yesterday, Professor Sandra Sieber and Joseph Pollor recently received the 2010 ECCH European Case Award for their case, Apple's iPhone: Calling Europe or Europe Calling. In this podcast, the authors revisit this case, highlighting the keys behind Apple's success and identifying the steps the company has taken since the iPhone launch. The iPad fundamentally is an internet access device. In this sense, it's very similar to the iPhone, and it was the first one that was really successful in hooking us customers up to the internet and making us consume internet content over our mobile. The iPad does the same. No? So it still wants us to, in a mobile environment, get hooked up to the internet and consume mobile. But then, of course, the interesting twist starts, which is that the screen is nice and big, uh, and that opens an entire new set of possibilities. Because with the iPhone, we actually had to adjust the content so that we could watch it on our screen, which was already pretty good, but it was not our laptop or our PC screen. This fact uh, of, of being an internet-enabling device with a big screen makes it different from an e-reader. Uh, for, for fundamentally, the e-reader has been conceived to read what we call permanent information. So when we start having a natural internet device as an e-reader, like the iPad is, then we suddenly get access to a whole new world of what we call what is dynamic information. Whatever is being produced now, I can be able to watch on my iPad. Apple claims, obviously, that there is a big market for this sort of information, of dynamic information, uh, of the non-permanent information. While obviously the permanent information is still included, so you can still look at this thing, no? but it's a different conception. So, how are the 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 e-reader vendors reacting. Uh, obviously, everybody is moving online, you know, so now we're including online capabilities. Uh, but uh, we should not forget that the fundamental technology that is being used is different. Right? So, so the e-readers mostly are using a more passive technology, more black and white sort of things, while the iPad uh, is the screen that we are used to, with all its colors, with all its uh, brightness, sharpness. You know? So, so it gives us the internet experience as we used to have it. It is cheaper. It is lighter than my laptop. Uh, it has a bigger screen than my netbook. Uh, and in this sense, uh, I think that it's positioned in a quite unique way. When you look at it, essentially, it is very similar to the business proposition that Apple initially posed to the market when they launched the iPhone. Uh, Apple, for first time ever in the telecommunications uh, industry, proposed a model of revenue sharing in which they were claiming uh, for around an eight to ten percent uh, share of the revenues of the operator. But then suddenly the iPhone got unlocked, and with the unlocking of the iPhone, you could take it away from your operator, take it to another one, and then this whole revenue sharing proposition fell apart. They were very fast in actually catching up with that uh, by finding another way of revenue sharing, which was through the application store. And in this sense, the iPad is very consistent with that vision that Apple seems to have. Uh, that it's not only about selling the hardware, but also getting a catch of what you do with the hardware afterwards. It may be through the application store, but it also could possibly be with new business models that content owners may come up with. It's interesting to see that um, from a customer perspective, I probably only want to pay that much for my internet experience. No? Conceptually, what I have to do is I have to pay for access to the data, and then I probably have to pay for the consumption of the content. So what is happening now is that I actually pay a lot, relatively speaking, obviously, for the access to the data. With 
Apple announcing that the iPod will be an open device in which I can buy a prepaid card and then I just hook it into my iPad and then I start consuming data and I've bought, uh, and I've bought for 250 megabytes or I've bought unlimited data, price is set. So the moment I start consuming, it is up to me to decide what I do with the money that is left over. With a business proposition, obviously, what they are trying to get the telcos into is into a price competition. When Apple launched the iPhone, the handset market was a, full, a very commoditized market and companies were scrambling for thin margins and some profitability. It was very hard to distinguish different terminals. Apple came with a different concept. Apple came with an integrated terminal that integrated hardware, software, and a store that allowed to link the world of content with the handset in a seamless manner. Uh, that provided opportunity for many creators of applications and uh, creators of content to reach the hands and the ears and the eyes of consumers in a very well integrated manner. The fact that a single company owns the crucial steps provides a, a better user experience than when different companies working separately try to combine their assets for the same service. It is obvious that the dominance of this seamless integration that the iPhone has been able to accomplish with a small screen and basically tiny video and small applications can be greatly enhanced when you have a much larger screen and a much faster processor. Uh, just for instance, newspapers come to mind. I think that what the iPad will do at least at the very least, is to in increase vastly the amount of, of applications and content that can reach in a, in a seamless manner the final user. So I expect a big disruption on the way content is transmitted to mobile users.